Well, again, Merry Christmas. I hope everyone has had a moment to open gifts and that they received, and, and I hope you all got something that you really wanted. I got something I really wanted, um, and, and this was unbeknownst to me, but all Christmas Eve at both services, as I was asking all the kids that were here at the 4 o'clock and all the adults and older kids at the 10 o'clock, what were they wishing for? I would share with them, well, I, I'm wishing for a Mini Cooper. That's what, and, and of course I said, I don't think I'll, I, I don't think I'll get it, but I got it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I got my Mini Cooper. I didn't know I had to put it together, but, uh, um, 1,077 Legos and I will have my Mini Cooper. So, I got it. Even in the color that I wanted. So, but at Christmas, we get the greatest gift, don't we? And we focus on that gift, and we say that gift is Jesus Christ, and it is. But we lose sight of even what's greater about that gift. We don't focus on the other side of that gift. We think of just Jesus coming to us, and that's wonderful. But Paul and John, in his gospel, point out that the greatest aspect of that gift is this idea that we have been adopted. We are children of God. And I want to look at that actually from a very theological point of view, because what we have in John's gospel, the Word was with God and the Word was God, is we have John retelling creation. We have a story of creation at the beginning of John's gospel. And so I want to look theologically at creation when it first came and at creation when we get in John's gospel, okay? And I want to look at this from the idea of adoption. There's two adoptions during Christmas. Did you know that? Two adoptions. The first one comes when Mary goes to Joseph and says, I'm with child, and it's not his. And he now has to consider what should he do. I mean, the easiest and most logical sense, because it's not his child, is to divorce her. And he even considers that option, doesn't he? He's considering to, ado- uh, to divorce her privately, quietly, But instead, he doesn't. He gets that visit from the angel, and the angel explains to to, uh, Joseph what's really going to happen. And Joseph decides to adopt Jesus. In a sense, what we have here in a single man is finally, for the first time, humanity getting it right. Humanity has chosen God. Think about that. Humanity has chosen God. At Christmas, we say yes, finally. Because what do we know at the beginning of time? When Adam and Eve were created, there is this whole understanding that everything is theirs. As long as they don't eat from this one tree, and what do they do? They ate from that one tree. At the beginning of time, in original creation, we see in one man and one woman, humanity saying no to God. I choose me. Christmas is all about saying and choosing rightly for the very first time, saying yes to God. That's the first adoption. The second adoption is what we read in our gospel as well as in that letter that Paul wrote to the Galatians. Anyone who believes in him through the power of God coming in Christ, you have the power to be adopted as children of God. The Holy Spirit will be poured upon you, and from that spirit, you can say legitimately, Abba. Daddy. That's what the word actually means, daddy, right? God adopts us. 
God comes to us at Christmas. God chooses us. But look back at the beginning of time, and what do we see at the beginning of time with creation? God choosing us. God has always chosen us. God has always chosen humanity from the beginning of time all the way through, and even at Christmas when new creation begins, God says, yes, I choose you. The power of Christmas is we finally see theologically both heaven and earth saying yes to each other, to live in harmony with each other. The gift we receive is adoption. The gift we offer is adoption. Let us in this day, in this time, in this season, adopt Jesus as our God and allow God to adopt us through Christ. See how awesome that gift is? And that gift is given throughout time. And because Joseph said yes to Mary and yes to Jesus, that adoption goes throughout time. So now in our day, we can say yes to God and still stumble in our path, but say yes to God and have it be affirmed, knowing full well God always chooses us. That's the Christmas miracle. That's the Christmas miracle. In the book of Job, Job finally acknowledges that God does not keep track of our sin but he watches over our steps. And I've shared this many times because that one passage is so true in my walk of faith, and I hope you can resonate with it. Because God doesn't want us to sin, that's true, but we will. And God is more interested in that next step. Are you going to come back and say yes? Are you going to choose that Christmas miracle and adopt God again? Because God will always say yes to you. Amen? Amen. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Children of God, you have been adopted. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son and especially the gift of being adopted to be known and to be called a child of yours. We pray, O oh Lord, that in our life, in our own way, each day we can choose you, knowing full well you will always choose us. Thank you for that Christmas miracle. And we pray this in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.